to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday edition of the Fantasy Footballers. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway back with you. Another week of football nearly in the books. We got a doubleheader tonight for Monday Night Football, but... I hope there's a lot of uh, points scored in tonight's games. We've got a we've got at least one of our leagues where it's like no, nobody scored fantasy points. It's It was a weird weekend of like a handful of players doing all the work. Yeah, that's fair. If you had one of the studs, congratulations. Yeah. Most people didn't do work. Yeah, and we had the, the storyline of 2024 continuing to rear its ugly, yep. painful head, which is uh, the injury bug. I mean, every single week you're having to make adjustments. I mean, this is part of not resting on your laurels at the draft. This is why we say you don't win your league at the draft because it's impossible to run the table with the team that you drafted. You need to make constant adjustments and pivots and – and then it, pivot again. It's also why we tell people, and hopefully if you're still listening, you're one of these people that maybe you got off to a bad start this year, but you didn't give up. Uh, we say that because the the league changes every single week. And if you look at you know year after year after year and you look at who was good in the first half of the year and then who was good in the second half of the year, it's oftentimes like the complete reverse. So all these bad teams, all these players were busts. It's like, oh, no, now they're great. Um, you know, you look at Mike's, team in league of record mm -hmm. that when we started the first couple of weeks we were talking about just the oh it was in shambles the annihilation of your roster how putrid whether by injury or performance and now all of a sudden you're you're rattling off a bunch of wins in a row and I think I think the foot clan wants to hear this as well I want to set up the stage here between this epic unbelievable matchup between you two gentlemen uh Andy and Mike are playing each other this week in the league of record mono imano <laughs> And you would not believe that their current score in the league of record, Andy, is sitting there with 107.4 fantasy points. It's a really good score for two weeks or for two games left. For two games left. Mike is sitting with 107.4 fantasy points to the decimal they are tied. It's also a good score. Uh, Kyler Murray and James Conner are on Andy's team. Will they or will they not outscore the trifecta of J.K. Dobbins? Mark Andrews, and Marvin Harrison. That, to me, seems like a pretty fair fight. I do not know. I don't know either. <laughs> I really like, uh, you know, the Harrison-Kyler connection is a, a wrinkle. The fact Andrews is being dependent upon to do anything in a fantasy matchup is, a, is a wrinkle. And um, and J.K. Dobbins should destroy the Cardinals tonight. <laughs> so, uh, and the fact it's our home team that's going to decide a lot of what's going on. It's It's going to be great. You guys should go to the game. Just get tickets right now. Go tonight. Make new plans. But sit on opposite sidelines. Oh, for sure. Your enemies. You know, <laughs> with laser pointers. Um, no, it, it should be fun. And if you don't have any drama going on tonight, you can follow along with the Mike versus Andy saga this evening. But, you know, th there were some major injuries we're going to get into, studs and duds to talk about. I believe, what did Brooks just tell me? He said, there have only been four quarterbacks so far with 20 plus fantasy points this week. And there's only one wide receiver with more than 20 fantasy points this week. So yeah. um, that's know, what that's, that's what I was feeling. <laughs> there's one guy who almost made it to 20 points uh, who was started, I'm going to guess, in 0.0% .0 of leagues. Marcus Mariota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that's a perfect <laughs> summary of the week, too, because we had our fantasy face off. You two went with Geno Smith and DK Metcalf's decks. Yeah. Amazing. They connected on touchdowns. I spent up on Jaden Daniels. Seventy six hundred dollars. He's out mm -hmm. for the game. I'm in first. Yeah. With yeah. no quarterback. You won. How? I you know. The we'll never, will never, we'll never know. know. All right. You guys out there, thank you for listening to the show, supporting the show, and reacting with us each and every weekend. 
So let's get into your reactions, your submissions, this week's Monday Punday. Starting with the sophisticated mm. good performances of the week, like Kareem of the Crop. Or Gorgeous Pickens. How about Kittles and Pits? Kittles, Kittles and Pits. Pits. And uh, the debut of Amari Super. Oh, and his <laughs> departure allowed for David Winjoku. What? Or Hustle Wilson. Yeah. That's a good name for him. And uh, this is one of the reasons I'm in contention. Jamiracle Gibbs. Uh, another reason you're in contention. Whoa, Mixon. That's true. That tandem was very nice. Uh, we had bad performances, yeah. Mike. Yeah, but how about that jerk cousins? Oh, and Tyreek Nil. Uh, you got blank Dell. Septic Tank Dell. And Tank Smells. Yeah. Let's just give him the trifecta. Yeah, he deserves it. Uh, Lamison Williams. <laughs> Wait, Brock Turdy? Yeah, Brock you, Turdy. You didn't pay, play against him in his rushing touchdowns. Three interceptions. I don't yeah. think he threw any. Uh, Devontae Whiff. One of my personal favorites, Jaden Pete. Oh, <laughs> Josh Sidham Downs. And uh, another story of the weekend. Oh, why, why are we doing this to this guy? Goose Goose Smith Schuster. <laughs> the guy was hurt. <laughs> yeah, but Goose Goose instead of Juju is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's pretty good. We and that's had, high class comedy. We had, uh, yeah, that's, that's the show in a nutshell. Juju went out. With zero points. Yeah. Debo was dealing with an illness. Yeah. Zero points. Jordan Whittington. Uh, illness? No, his was an injury, but I think he played like nine snaps, and they're like, yeah. Demario, Demario Douglas, illness. Illness. You had a lot of players that were started across the leagues that were kind of a little bit questionable. You weren't sure about the health, and then, you know, if you decided to play it safe, um, congratulations. And if you didn't, then... Shame on you, but but it works in both directions. Because like I I played it safe on my personal lineup by not starting uh, Lad McConkey, who had his own little questionable injuries in Monday Night Football. So you know I played it safe. I went Josh Downs. Nice. <laughs> so all uh, just so you know, all of my wide receivers on my league of Rest league of record team, they combined for zero point eight fantasy points. That is impressive. Yeah, and I, I think I'm gonna win. Well, I mean, that would be kind of the way that the Colts won this weekend with the same strategy. <laughs> right, yes. Josh Downs does play for the Colts. Josh Downs did nothing for the Colts. Oh, Anthony Richardson, he, all he does is win. Yeah. The matchups uh, for Richardson, very mm -hmm. uh -huh. conducive to not scoring points and still winning. Man, he looked bad. Has <laughs> He's looked bad. He's looked bad the entire year. Week one, week one, he looked great I, th I thought he looked great I know his completion percentage was 47 percent but remember the three of us after we yeah. won, we sat down we watched the film good. he looked pretty good he connected on you know deep bombs he had a rushing touchdown he looked like what we were hoping he was going to develop into and then it's been <laughs> the rest of the way and that yeah, was just I mean, for clarity that was a wet one just that was not no, like I, oh, I got that you. wasn't no, solid I, I, we it, it's in my ears I felt it yeah the uh the last two games or actually let's just go three games for Anthony Richardson not that we won't get to the duds today but the last three games where he's played a hundred percent of snaps he has thrown one total passing touchdown he hasn't thrown a passing touchdown in three games in well, a row if you only take the last three 100 percent of snap games he still has not scored 10 fantasy points in any one of those matchups. So He was 42% passing yesterday. 10 for 24. He didn't get to 10 points, and he ran the ball 14 times. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's an impressive feat. Um, also, And he was, what, a fourth-round pick, fifth-round pick for people? He goes on yeah. the road to Houston, who is a pretty difficult matchup. At least they've got a good pass yeah, rush and a good road. secondary. Oh, on my the road. gosh. Then they, he goes on the road to Minnesota, which is an outstanding defense. Oh, but don't worry. Then he plays Buffalo, New York Jets, and then Detroit, and then New England, and then Denver. So those are all great defenses. He's been on my trade And block. then Tennessee. I've, I've had him like on the trade because he, he was the guy I had to right. go after in League of Record. and. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, he's hitting waivers this week. No, people are people aren't uh, giving nope. up. No nibbles. For him, no huh? nibbles. I've been watching the bobber uh, on the lake, and it's not moving. <laughs> you it's put just... the cast out there. <laughs> yeah, it's been there a long time. Ain't no, ain't no bait on the I line, my brother. The, I think the bait fell off. Yeah. I really do. <laughs> Eight consecutive matchups coming up against top tier defenses. <sighs> so I, you know, yes, you congratulations, you beat Miami, and um. There you go. How Miami's that? not good. Well, they weren't good. 
Uh, I think the Cardinals are going to find a completely different Miami team next week when it is led <laughs> yeah, that's by Tua. Some, that's, that's very true. All right, let's get into uh, ready to roll. Welcome to Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan. That's a mad jam. I don't think I've given you credit on that one, but that's, well, that's good. That's yeah, good stuff. It, yeah, it's uh, it's an homage. <laughs> Pretty on the nose. All right, so this week's Ready to Roll. Uh, I want to talk about uh, target shifts. Like fantasy football, you're trying to stay on top of the trends, and we're at, we're at a point of the season now where we can look and be like, hey, this is the way that this season is currently trending. Is it going to stay that way? Are things shifting? And, I mean, they're all, you know, we know this, but it's really pointed out here of, like, the personnel and especially, you know, the coaching staff. That changes how uh, how the target share is going to go out. You know, it's looking at the Falcons. The their, the percentage of targets to the, the tight end position is way down compared to the uh, the Arthur Smith teams. Uh, you know, that – the uh, the Miami Dolphins, of course, that I'm, I'm not going to get into them because they're just kind of broken right now. But the discussions I want to had was the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Joe Burrow at the beginning was peppering the tight ends. T. Higgins comes back, and everything is still kind of on the side of Jamar Chase. Is you know I took him first in our redraft of the of a redo of the draft, and because he's been fantastic. But at the same time, what I think people aren't totally realizing is since T. Higgins has returned, the targets are normalized to the wide receiver position, and he has out-targeted Jamar Chase in four straight games. He's also ahead in first read targets you know, coming from fantasy points. So it's a – but while everything is Jamar, 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 where are we at with T. Higgins, T. Higgins for over, the rest of the season? T. Higgins over the last three games is on pace – for 164 targets, 113 receptions, 1,371 yards, and a touchdown every single game. That's, you know, those are three good games. Everybody, you know, has good stretches. That's not prescriptive, like, oh, that's what he's going to end up as. But that's just to illustrate how good he has been. And it's coincided with Joe Burrow playing some good ball. I don't know what it is about the Bengals and Joe Burrow, but we have enough years to know, like, they just get off to slow starts. Yeah, it I seems mean, that way. It's unbelievable the frequency. Uh, I, I believe we brought this up after week two, but I think over the last, whatever it is, like five years, Joe Burrow is one and nine in his first two weeks in the NFL. It, it's wild. And so they've gotten it together over the last month, um, started to win some games and playing well. I think T. Higgins is, you know, obviously a must start every single week. But yeah, he, but it's just he projects rare. to me as like like a wide receiver like the wide receiver fifteen. Is this a is this a buy high situation? I'm not not counting the first game back from injury. He was re acclimating, but since then he's seeing an average of thirty four percent of the targets for the Cincinnati Bengals. And Burrow is playing. Andy, where are you like are you do you, do you feel like this is now what's happening for T. Higgins? Are you trying to trade for him on the high? Are no. You... No, I'm not trading for him on the high. I mean, you have, you've you you've had a two-touchdown game. He scored this week. He's an integral part of the offense. I feel like the discussion is always, you know, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddell, and T. Higgins are going to be linked forever as a trifecta of, you know, wide receiver twos. Chase is going to give you the weak winning explosive games, and Higgins is going to be the, you know, very solid, but needs the touchdown to give you to give you a top ten game. I mean, it's I think, a nice run for him for sure. I think we're also at the point in the season like we we don't do this at the draft, but we're we're seven weeks in. We're going into week eight. We got a couple weeks left before normal leagues trade deadlines, and and we are looking now towards that playoff schedule. We do mm -hmm. know who our good defense is, is to throw against or not, and and it's, it's brutal. It's brutal for them. Their playoff weeks: fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen at Tennessee. Uh, their team might not be good, but their defense is great, and especially their their yeah. passing work with Legarius Sneed there. Cleveland, who's only got a shot based on their defense, and then the Denver defense, which has been outstanding. Um, at least they're uh, at home for two of them. Yeah, with Sertan there, and so like, it's not. I don't. I think because of the schedule, I wouldn't trade high on him. I would still be willing to acquire him, but right now the manager of T, they've been experienced in this. They're not. They're not selling him. For well, yeah, that's why. It's, are you? You know, like sometimes you have to buy high if you if you believe that a player is going to continue. 
The other team I wanted to talk about because there was a, an injury. I don't think we're confirmed yet on Brandon Ayuk, but we all saw it. Uh, it's serious. It, yeah, it, it they're they're whispering ACL right now, and if they're whispering that, it's probably the ACL. Uh, but the the thing about this team is with Christian McCaffrey out, the target percentage going to running backs is down ten percent right now. They even though you know that we had the Jordan Mason got the jugs machine and that narrative has not translated into a like a Chris McCaffrey level of target share for him or anyone else who who steps in which is the wide receivers are getting everything uh we're still a few weeks away from Chris McCaffrey's return so there is uh, why I'm bringing it up is we're going to talk waivers of course tomorrow but like this is ripe here of if the if the target share is going to continue to be really high for the wide receiver up from 56% last year to 63 percent right now like there is a real opportunity for the San Francisco 49ers uh let me at the have, wide receiver position at the wide receiver position yeah do you have does anyone have their schedule right in front yeah, of you yeah I do the uh you've got the Los Angeles Rams is that next uh no I'm, I'm talking about playoffs okay playoffs okay. 15 16 17 similar to, to T Higgins the Los Angeles Rams the Miami Dolphins and the Detroit Lions I think I, I would say that's Fairly middle of the pack. I think. I think Mike was looking towards the I'm weeks looking before short term, CMC yes. came yeah, back. Yeah, I want the short term boost here. Which you know, Pearsall got on the field yesterday. Ayuk's likely going to be out for the season. Debo is a is still being brought up as a trade name to monitor for the trade deadline. The team probably won't do that now with the Ayuk injury. Those were rumors before the game. But you know, the next uh, week eight, Dallas, then the bye, then Tampa Bay and Seattle. It's a nice schedule. I would I would expect to see CMC maybe week ten, but you know next week whether Juwan Jennings is healthy, Ricky Pearsall, and the fact that this team you know you can you can use a jugs machine all you want, Mike, but that doesn't make you capable of running passing routes at the right. running back position, and that's what we're seeing. Like this offense isn't the same without CMC. Obviously, if it was, that would be a, an indictment on CMC. He's too special. <laughs> sure. You know, so um, San Francisco, kind of a weird team right now. And, uh, you know, Pearsall was a high draft pick. He was a second rounder, right? He was, oh, he was a first, first rounder. rounder. First rounder. Back that's, first. That's a round earlier than the second. It is. So Pearsall, I think they have expectations. And now, you know, it was funny. Somebody picked him up on Sunday morning and spent fab on him in our league of record. And no one else had picked him up or spent fab that morning. And it, so it was an outrageous overspin. And now it seems like just a preemptive overspin because yep. he will be going – like on the waiver show tomorrow, Ricky Pearsall will be deserving of what was spent this past weekend for sure. Yeah, he'll be a major pickup. Don't forget about Jacob Cowing, though, as well. Mm -hmm. um, he got involved. He is a fellow rookie. Ooh. This <laughs> Is that a move? That was Cowing. I don't know. That was, he, was, he was verbing. It's fine. Um, and so Jacob Cowing – Monday. He, he had uh, – 50 yards he had a big 41 yard reception in the game so it, we don't know where it's going but to your point he, they it's are just, throwing to the wide receiver yeah it's just pointing out that over the next few weeks while McCaffrey is out it's like an even it could be a bigger boost than just the injury to Brandon Ayuk all right uh that was ready to roll thanks again to our sponsor Nissan and the all-new reimagined Nissan Kicks redesigned with the bold new look the Nissan Kicks sports the latest tech like a Bose personal plus sound system head over to NissanUSA.com to learn more and remember Bose Personal Plus sound system is an available feature. Bose is a registered trademark of the Bose Corporation. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Brandon Ayuk is believed to have yeah. suffered a torn ACL in the loss to the Chiefs. This was a this has been and continues to be an unmitigated disaster on every front for the 49ers, Brandon Ayuk, and now fantasy managers. Ayuk wasn't in camp, admittedly kind of didn't know what he was doing with the holdout, says he could have handled it way better, didn't get the opportunity to play, not that I'm associating a lack of reps with the ACL, but you never know, and then didn't perform on the field when he got the opportunity through six weeks. He had one good game through seven weeks. Now he's hurt, goes out, and the team loses him after paying him and has a long road to recover. Score one for the sitting out player, though. I mean, <clears throat> you, you, I, I don't, I don't. Uh, I, Is I don't, that your view on it? Oh, one hundred percent. Because he just tore his ACL this season. If he doesn't go and get the bag, which 
with him not obviously if he didn't hold out he would not have gotten paid he got paid because he was holding out and they they needed a wide receiver you know they were looking at trading him and what whatnot so my point is it sucks for the 49ers for sure but for Brandon Ayuk he, you know I don't think holding out is what caused an ACL injury well, this far into the season so the yeah. irony is he didn't get paid more by holding out because he ended up having to accept their offer and they were negotiating with him before the holdout so I think it would be like you know, a little debatable on the order of operations there, but I guess it's good for him that he got the money. But, yeah. I mean, I, it's hard for me to say that in these situations where the 49ers just shelled out oh, it's, all that guaranteed money and then they don't have the player that they wanted. No, I know. You're, you're refs and owners, and so I get it. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we, we know yeah. who feel real bad for those the salary cap. Uh, so in that, in that case, you're thrilled for Deshaun Watson is what you're saying. No. No, that's what I heard. Wait, how, how did we get there? Is it because he's got guaranteed money? Yeah, he's out, and then now the the ownership and the team doesn't get any of the playing on the field, and that's what you said you're into. I'm not sure that's what I said. Yeah, but that is exactly what you said. Uh, I don't think I don't, that's a that's How a big is that leap. a different situation? Uh, he's a, that's a different human so story. Full blown different sitch. Uh, but we can hop to that. We can literally hop to that news. identical. Season-ending injury for a player you guaranteed money to. Identical situation. Well, he didn't hold out in order to try to get a contract that he didn't have. He came in and has had this contract yeah. for years. But the league held him out. Deshaun Watson, uh, we saw it right away. Like, if you were watching the game, yeah. they had the, the camera on the back of the calf, and you could see the, the Aaron Rodgers pop, and you knew immediately, yep. like, well, you can diagnose that in one second. He tore his Achilles. If it wasn't for this crazy contract, I think we would all think maybe that was the last snap this poor performing quarterback would play in his career. However, he's still got years left on this contract. Um, you know, players, Jameis is coming out and, 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 you know, people from the Browns organization supporting Watson. And so this is a, he's done. So the, there is a lot of fantasy implication here from who's the backup. Dorian Thompson Robinson was the back up this week he got injured but it's not considered serious so they're going to see if he can grip a ball this week uh Jameis Winston had been the backup up until this week uh he got some play in this game after uh Dorian Thompson Robinson got injured so we'll, we'll have to and then what happens to the receiving targets Jerry Judy and and Cedric Tillman who had right. kind of a breakout game and of course David Njoku a lot to discuss, we'll, we'll get into, I think, m most of the details on the waiver show tomorrow about specifics. No Jaden Daniels left in the first quarter, uh, the first quarter, and uh, it was a rib injury, x-rays negative, the his, game was out of hand, and he didn't have to come back in. His mommy said he's fine. That's that's <laughs> not a joke? That is not a joke. No, it's, no, it's, yeah, that was actual news. She was actually one of the first people to yeah. report. Like she did, That was early. People are wondering how it's going. Like We, we haven't heard an update. Is he going to return to the game? And then Mama tweeted out, "He's fine." So I don't know if she got a text, but this is good news from like uh, I would imagine if she's tweeting that out that he doesn't have broken ribs. Um, at that point, by the time he would have came back in the game, it was already like mm -hmm. that game was out of hand. DK Metcalf left with a knee injury. Mike McDonald said we're optimistic; it doesn't look too bad. He got carted off. We all watched it on yeah. the TV screen, which you don't like to see your player carted off. It wasn't f to use the restroom. Not too. Not yeah. this time. Not well. Too, I mean, you know, could have been both. That's true. He could have needed to tinkle. Yeah, I probably did. I mean, he's hydrating. Yeah, X-rays um, and a tinkle. X-rays and a tinkle. <laughs> I wonder if they got a toilet in the X-ray room just for uh, those. You know, get them out quicker. Get them back to the field quicker. <laughs> uh, there's just toilets everywhere back there. Yeah, man. just like there's just drains <laughs> on the ground. Corners <laughs> of all rooms have drains. We have a blue tent for medical. We really need like a. Like a yellow tint. Oh, a little toilet potty pop-up No, there room? should be two. A yellow tint and a brown tint. Oh. Mm -hmm. And you see which one they go into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lamar needed the brown tint back in the day. <laughs> I, rem I remember that was the, the waddle to the yeah. locker room. That was an all-timer. Um, anyways, getting back to the injury. Three for, tints. For DK Metcalf. <laughs> um, uh, he's going in the brown tent. We're not yeah. sure what he's How doing in there. Be? He's been in the brown he's tent a long five time, minutes Bob. And 45 seconds. <laughs> um, this is a bad one. Uh, oh, but DK man. Metcalf the at this point spends a lot of time in the back. They're right? they're optimistic. It doesn't look too bad. That does not mean he's not going to miss time. I think that means that um, y this doesn't look like a season ender, which is great. TBD on more information, but we will need it. He's been really good. I hope he is okay. I've got some shares of Metcalf.
Aiden O'Connell broke his right thumb in the loss to the Rams. The uh, Gardner Minshew experience begins again for the Raiders and their one receiver. Yeah, it's a four to six week injury for O'Connell. So he will go to IR and we got a month of Gardner. Tyler Huntley left early with a right shoulder injury in the Miami game. Two is expected to return to practice and has a chance to return in week eight against the Cardinals. If you can picture the meme of the Undertaker sitting up in the casket mm -hmm. and apply it to every single player on the entire Miami offense if Tua returns, that would be probably appropriate. Hopefully he comes back wearing that Guardian helmet. I, I assume he will since his teammate who just had a concussion, Devon Achan, was wearing it. And <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, he looked like Darth Helmet. <laughs> He's already a smaller, <laughs> svelte guy. That's the problem. If he was an offensive lineman, like yeah. I think all the offensive linemen probably should be in guardian caps, but it won't look weird. But when you're a tiny, like the issue with Achan as an NFL player is only his size. He's a tiny guy. He's too small to play that position. You know, historically speaking, when when you look at the the the, the metrics of all running backs, it's the height. And he's short. He's tiny. He's five and nine. He's he's a full NBA Jam character with the Guardian yeah, helmet it's, on. It's like, big big head mode. You put in the code and yeah. you got the big head mode. It's yeah. so funny to watch him run. But I'm I'm glad. Do I they mean, make different got, sizes of the Guardian? Like, can you go double? Can you go triple Guardian? I you know if you can, Tua should do Tua that. Tua should do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, I will say this. <laughs> he can't lift his head off the ground. I've got, I've got a chan on a handful of leagues. One of my my guys. And I loved seeing him in the Guardian helmet. I mean, I was like, yes, sir. Yeah, protect that's, that brain, man. That's right. Yeah, I mean, that day. I would put spikes on him if I could, like his shoulder pads. <laughs> just like Wait, put spikes on the helmet? No, put spikes on all of his pads. Just well, make see, that's going to be illegal. Well, I know sure, that, that, but I would do it. I know that's a big ref thing to say. Right, you are a big ref. Spikes and all. You guys want entertainment. Are um, you not entertained? Yeah, I take back my apology. I'm big refs again. Okay. All right, Debo, we <laughs> talked about it. Pop Douglas and other players leaving due to injury. And then we had we had the full gamut of Jason panic attacks happening here in the studio because David Montgomery went down with a knee injury, was limping off the field. Jason had basically already written a eulogy for him. I've lost. He sent out funeral invitations. I've lost everyone on my main league and – all I had left was David Montgomery. <laughs> but he came back. He did, and it was awesome. Uh, obviously, if you're disappointed with the performance on the day, uh, you just got to wash it away because he got injured, missed a chunk of that game, and uh, and uh, wasn't as utilized. But awesome to see him back because when he limped off, I was just ready for uh, Isaiah Pacheco Part 2. Tony Pollard had a concussion check, came back into the game. Will Levis was an early scratch um, due to injury. The fact the head coach had to come out after the game and said the injury is real tells you everything you need to know about that. It really does. And then Cooper Cup was a scratch as well because they wanted uh, – I like the quote from McVay. He said he want, they were concerned about a return to performance, not just a return to the field. Interesting. So they, they have the Thursday night game. That's the Rams game. So this was only like delaying his debut by four days and making sure he's back out there. And so they won anyways, and I th I think, it was a smart move by the team. I think it was. Additionally, not only w is it only delaying it four games, but you would be asking a player coming back off of injury to be ready to go. Four games later. Four days yeah. later um, after playing. So that, that would be very difficult on, on Cup. And I haven't heard anything on Puka, but please come back soon. <laughs> Nobody's talking about Puka, Jason. <laughs> what? Nobody's talking about it. Aww. No, I just mean like no. The people are talking. Um, the people need him back. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break. We'll jump into the studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Top three scorers of the week at the quarterback position before the Monday games. Number one, Hustle Wilson, 24.9 points. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable that the number one quarterback on the week right now is Russell Wilson for two Unlimited. reasons. One reason is because it's Russell Wilson mm -hmm. behind a beat-up uh, offensive line. Unlimited. And the second reason is because he wasn't that good. <laughs> like, 264-2 and two is a 
fine game. I mean, when we're streaming, yeah, I'll take that. When we're streaming quarterbacks, that's exactly what we're looking for. We're like, yes, we got two fifty and two, awesome. But that's not usually the number one quarterback on the week. We do still have Lamar, Baker, Kyler uh, tonight. I didn't mention Herbert. You he know, had the, you know, the rushing touchdown as well. Josh Allen, 24 points just behind him, and Jalen Hurts at 22.8 were the top three of the week. Russ, you just talked about it. Hurts, two rushing touchdowns. He was only 10 for 14 for 114 yards passing in this game, but um, you know, did what was needed to be done against a Giants team where Daniel Jones – at home, cannot throw a touchdown pass. Did I don't we, know if you've seen this, but did, he, he can't. He no, can't throw a touchdown pass at home. Six games in a row at home that he has not thrown a passing touchdown. That is incredible. Um, if you did that two full games in a row, that's bad. Three is, in, is, is surprising. Six is astounding. To I mean, at some point, he will end up getting the bench this year. Josh Allen uh, had a great week. He has back-to-back -to -back top five weeks again. Uh, ask me how many interceptions he's thrown through seven weeks. How many how interceptions many, yeah. has yeah. he thrown through seven weeks? Zero. I feel mm. like he knew that answer already. He did. Uh, zero interceptions, only four uh, total turnovers on the year. I know someone has thrown a lot more than that. His name is Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, what the Chiefs did yesterday defies logic and explanation in every form. Patrick Mahomes – played bad football. The Chiefs have no wide receivers. Travis Kelsey, uh, so he threw for 154 yards and zero touchdowns. That's what Patrick Mahomes did. 12, 12 fantasy points. Okay. Um, two interceptions. Two interceptions. They beat the 49ers by a bunch of points. They got nothing from Kelsey, lost Juju, have no wide receivers left. Are undefeated. It is, it is Andy Reid is so incredible because McCole Hardman doesn't belong in the National Football League and he's a good player for the Chiefs. I, I wouldn't say he doesn't belong. He's got a did you watch he, he him in role the, did you watch him in New York? No. I if would, if you judged him off of New York's performance, he would be in the NFL equivalent of the G League. I mean, this is um it's just incredible. Twenty eight to eighteen, ten point win. In San Francisco, when your quarterback throws for 154 yards and your your running back is off the street and scores two more, it, I'm just giving them their flowers because uh, it, it, Mahomes cares about W's. Yeah, that sucks. Maybe then he should not throw so many interceptions. <laughs> that seems like a bad way to get W's. Well, I mean, yes, he threw a couple of interceptions, but it, it, <laughs> they won the game by ten points. Yeah, well, because Brock Purdy threw more. Three right, he was at three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was just wild. Drake May was a good streamer, two seventy six and two. Jacksonville, they keep they keep giving it to us. Yeah, target Jacksonville. Running backs, uh, the top five running back scores of the week in fantasy points. Gibbs was incredible. Well, there's there's a couple of there's we got five names here. See if you can spot the two names that are surprising. Okay, so Jameer okay. Gibbs, thirty okay. points. Yeah, Saquon Barkley, twenty five. Yeah. Joe Mixon, 25. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Javante Williams, 25. Oh, what? <laughs> Tank Bigsby. <laughs> Tank Bigsby 23.8. There you go. Yeah. I got tanked in a couple leagues. <laughs> That's good, man. I mean, I, I got know. Got tanked hard. There, there was a, a question we had on the show last week that we said was like a really tough, good question between James Conner and Tank uh, Bigsby, highlighting the, the matchup that he had and that if Travis Etienne was gone – it really was a game script thing the week prior, and that if Jacksonville has the lead, Tank should get a lot of work. Yeah, I got really scared about that <laughs> advice when it, I I wake up and it's ten nothing, and I'm like, oh shoot! Oh, and he had know. done nothing at that point, right? Yeah. Because they're down. I'm like, oh no, this is going to be a, a Dearness Johnson game, and then who did run well as uh, nine yeah. carries, but yeah, now now they came out and asked him, are you going to make a change at running back starter? He said that you don't. He didn't believe Doug Peterson said he didn't believe that. You lose your job due to injury. I like hearing that as a Travis Etienne <laughs> manager. I, I mean, really you do. gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be nervous, super nervous. I, I've watched enough to say that Tank Bigsby has a special tackle breaking ability that does not exist in the more explosive, better pass catcher Travis Etienne. Etienne needs 
you know, it's a little most dirty HN type of thing. Not, I'm not saying they're a perfect match, but Bigsby runs with a ferocity that has proven itself out now over seven weeks and ETN doesn't run that way. So I think committee is what we're in store for. And I don't really care who gets the first snap. It's about who you start in fantasy. And that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem like the Tampa Bay situation. We love Buck Irvin and his ferocity of the way he runs. He runs between the tackles better than Rashad White, no question. White's a better pass catcher. Richard, Richard White. Thank you. DW. Yeah. No. no. DW. What is this? When you're in trouble? If you know, you know. What? When you're in trouble, it's called DW. Is that how it goes? Dark wing duck. Yeah. Yeah. That's like four layers Let's too far. Let's get dangerous. <laughs> hey, we got dangerous <laughs> with that nickname. <laughs> All right, um, but yeah, committee backs are not fun to try to pick the right week, and we're going to do our best to help you and give you the information you need about ETN's injury and whether you can uh, thanks Bigsby yet again. Joe Mixon is incredible. Joe Mixon is the RB2 in fantasy points per game. You take away the games he missed due to injury, I believe he's put up three 27-point games in four starts. It is a delight. He is spectacular. They lost the game. It was very close. They lost at the end. And this was a game where C.J. Stroud barely threw the football and was awful while doing it. And they almost won because of the running game. Yeah, Stroud, you know, we, we brought this up in the offseason looking at the truth of the uh, quarterback series about his splits, uh, you know, both home road and good and bad defenses. Last year as a rookie, he was, you know, he's unbelievable for a rookie. But whenever he had a tough matchup, especially a tough matchup on the road, he imploded. And so far this year, I don't think he's done enough to really, you know, you, you had a tough matchup on the road in week three uh, against Minnesota. That's really tough, but he didn't get to 10 fantasy points. And then the next tough road matchup he had was this week against Green Bay, 5.3 fantasy points. So I think this is one of those things two weeks from now, it's going to be on the road against the Jets. I mean, their defense doesn't look like it has been. Um, uh, you know, over the last yeah, but they're two a great years, passing defense. exactly. Yeah. So that 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 worries me a little bit. Also, the Green Bay defense, you're going to need to pay attention to whether they're just one to avoid, especially in Lambeau for quarterbacks, because we just got off of hit them shutting Kyler down minus five point two against expectation, and then Stroud minus eleven against expectation. Um, that could be a trend that continues. And I can hear the smiles of Al Borland as I say those words. Yeah. Brees Hall was... Oh, we're back, baby. Not good on the ground. Yeah, I don't care. I don't know if you listened to Aaron Rodgers come out and no. talk about how they need... His his solution to the offense is running the ball better. Oh. Um, so that they can play action pass. Oh. But Brees was 6 for 103 through the air... And Braylon Allen barely saw the field. So the Brees experience is good right now. It's sin I mean, since the coaching change, the I mean, Braylon Allen was barely on the field two weeks ago. Correct. Am I remembering no, that? No, you're hundred percent. Like correct. they they've gone back to the eleven touches in two weeks for Braylon Allen. Yeah, they've gone back to the Brees Hall is everything is gonna do it all. And you know what's funny is I think he could have used the player two off more. Because when he got to the end of that fifty something yard pass reception, I've never seen a player more gassed as he went to the sideline. <laughs> he didn't even make an effort to get into the end zone at the end of the play. He was like, <sighs> <sighs> and then he waved himself off. He's like, oh, and he stayed out for a while. Yeah. Kenneth Walker, RB three in fantasy points per game. He is really good at football. Even had a touchdown called back in this one. Bijan and, and his his touchdown reception was oh man, you know one so of the good. knocks of Kenneth Walker uh, coming out of college was that he didn't he wasn't utilized in college as a pass catching back which I uh, you know we talked about that was a system he was used a lot in high school he's he's got good hands and he showed it that was like a wide receiver catch yeah utilization in college and capability are not always connected we know offensive systems define a lot because mm -hmm. Walker was equally capable in the past couple of years when they didn't give him the opportunity. It was just offensive system. Bijan, 21 for 103, consistently looking really good Looked on the ground awesome. in this game. Um, Kareem Hunt, two more touchdowns. The recipe is there for the Chiefs. Yep. They did lose, uh, I believe, a broken arm. 
They lost a broken arm? I didn't in get the fi- stadium? I didn't get to finish my They sentence. left it behind. But I mean, do you really want it anymore? It's not working. If it broke off? Well, it's broken. Yeah. It's not going to heal. <laughs> do we cut the mics after a while? Or how does this work? I would leave it. I would leave the arm at, at that stadium. <laughs> Anyways, what, so whose arm was it? You said a cornerback. Okay. <laughs> I would cut that guy. Yeah. He didn't. <laughs> I don't want him one arm cornerback. Did, no, man. no. He's still got. See, it's broken. Oh, he, it's not okay. removed. All right. I thought they, I that thought would you have said been they left. More, that would have been the headline story if a player's arm was removed in the game. They Jason. left the arm behind. Sorry, I just was. Jason is in his mid 40s now. <laughs> that's all I have. Swish! To, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Oh, and man. if you if you're not gonna if you don't want to follow along with the cognitive decline, are you talking about? You're gonna have to find another show. You're talking about Jay, cornerback Jalen Watson who Thank you. fractured his ankle. Oh, his ankle. See, I, that's why I did have a question mark <laughs> at the end of it. This was a sentence that was gonna keep going before you jumped in about the departed arm. That has nothing to do with a Mm-mm. severed arm. Yeah, this poor guy. Yeah. So he has both arms now. I would not cut. Yeah, him. but a broken ankle. J.K. Two arms. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. Apologies. Uh, Kyron was great as always. Aaron Jones looked great, ran great. Josh Jacobs, his first he career did receiving touchdown ever. And, uh, you know, Josh Jacobs was a submission for the Monday Punday very often. Yeah. I mean, he was, he, he got he it looked done. Good. Yeah. He's, he's looked good all year. We talked about the touchdown, positive touchdown regression coming. I didn't think it would come through the air, but that was good. Also on touchdowns to go back to Kyron. Two more touchdowns. He is the only running back over the last decade with more, uh, or the only running backs with more uh, touchdowns over an 18-game span are Todd Gurley, Jonathan Taylor, and Alvin Kamara and CMC. So he is like elite. Now this next week, Minnesota's rushing defense, which one? Does he get a touchdown against Minnesota? Probably. Probably. He gets a touchdown every week. It's kind of like in his contract. Najee Harris, 21 for 102 and one. He actually has he, looked really good yeah. this year. Yeah, he's a. It's a contract year, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's lost some contract weight. I he's, think he's also slightly the, more expo- uh, explosive. Him and uh, James Conner, they've they've historically been second half of the year players. So if you want to talk about a guy that you who would might, you rather have between those two rest of season, James Conner. Boy, I hope I hope we can do something tonight. <laughs> yeah, me too. No, I really hope. Yeah, Mike does not hope. Yeah, that's. What does it feel like to root against it's, uh, your I mean, teams I'm, running? I'm used to it. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't care. I'm used uh, to it. Wide receiver, top five scores this week. Amon Ross St. Brown, 21.2 fantasy points. George Pickens, Justin Jefferson, who is outrageous. DK Metcalf and Brian Thomas Jr., who looked outstanding for Jacksonville after the first quarter. Do you know how easy it is to be a referee in a Minnesota Vikings game if you're like the the, the boundary ref? Because if if Josh if, if it's Justin Jefferson, you just go yeah I was in. Mm-hmm. You don't have to look. You don't have to look at the feet. You just assume, and you're like, no, nah, there's no way he caught that. You just go yeah it was a catch. Go ahead, look. It's always a catch. These impossible boundary receptions that he makes every single week. Where when you're watching in real time, you go no, there's no way that's a catch. But probably half the time not even call the catch on the field. And then you look and you're like, how did he do that? He's unbelievable, man. He is. I think he is easily the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. Paid like it. Um, what else do we got? We got George Pickens, nine targets, five for 111 and one. The opportunities that he's going to have to make plays are going to increase, and that's, I think, the best way to put the Russell Wilson at, at quarterback situation. You You just want the maximum amount of opportunities. You don't want to be looking at George Pickens with – you know, four targets, and he has to make a giant play. For the sake of consistency, you want to see these kind of numbers. Nine targets, give him a couple deep shots, look to him around the end zone. They don't have pass catchers beyond him right now. No, I mean, Van Jefferson uh, was involved in this game. So if, if you're going to Van Jefferson, you know George Pickens is going to be the primary target lead. I expect passing volume to go up with Russ there. And also, what is George Pickens' calling card? Like, what has it been in his career? His, the, the big play? Yeah, well, yeah, the big contested catch, the mm-hmm. highlight reel catch, you know, when a guy is on him. And the moon balls that Russ is famous for throwing, we talked about that before the show, like he throws these these high-arching um, 
footballs where it's really going to give a player like Pickens the opportunity to just go and win a jump ball, I think he's going to win those more often than not. So big plays could be more common. It's just funny because we just talked about the Hail Mary with Aaron Rodgers last week and Mm -hmm. why he makes certain – you know why he gets quote unquote lucky and yeah. keeps getting hail marys to work. Is, there's got to be some with the trajectory of the the arch on the ball. Yeah, or just pure dumb luck forever. Could be. Uh, Jefferson was great. Uh, he is averaging more fantasy points at home than any wide receiver in the history of the National Football League. That's okay. Matt Caff will monitor the injury. Buffalo, Los Angeles coming up four for ninety nine. Brian Thomas, um, he is the first player, this comes from Doug Clawson, the first player with 500 receiving yards on 30 or fewer receptions through seven games since Randy Moss. So he is doing big-time stuff with the opportunities he's getting, and they go. he, he is definitely a go-to receiver. You can see it. He is. I, I saw two screens that were designed for him in important parts of the game where it was like, clearly this is a player there saying, we have to get the ball in Brian Thomas Jr.'s hands. You love to see that, plus they're taking the deep shots. It's It's – Wonderful all the way around. What do you think about the wide wide receiver three on the year? Drake London. He's had a nose for the end zone every single week. Um, Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. He leads all wide receivers in percentage of routes targeted inside the red zone, and you can feel that because there have been multiple games this year where Drake London is on their trajectory for nothing. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it clicks, and, you know, look at the catches over the last six weeks. Six, six, six. 12, oh, more the best. Six and six. Um, yeah, I mean, you want more volume than that. There's been a lot of touchdown dependency. I um, wanted less volume there. <laughs> it, you know, y- you look at the last six games, he has a touchdown in five of them. So you can make an argument that this should be a trade high candidate, like trade away. I would, I would not. I would not either. I would actually see it as the opposite. I think I think Drake London is a buy high candidate that I am willing to spend up for him. Part of that is that end of season schedule. You 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 look at you know the Washington Commanders championship week, which first week of the playoffs, the the Las the, Vegas Raiders, the Washington Commanders. I think are, are real quick are worth a discussion because are like the defense is it good? So for the last, I want to give you some stats there, Mike, because I I was looking them up too. And I mentioned this in our in our company Slack yesterday, how it seems like they're getting 5% better per week because Dan Quinn's a defensive mind. I want you to listen to this at the quarterback position in particular, okay? If you're a quarterback playing the commanders, remember we criticized Kyler? Yeah. Okay. Since that game, negative 7, so that was neg- uh, minus 7.2 against expectation. Mm-hmm. The next game, minus 4.8. The next yeah. game, who, who, minus – I, I want to know who That's, the quarterbacks are. Well, the next one was Watson. Okay, Watson. But then it was Lamar, minus two point three against expectation. Lamar on the road in Buff in they, Baltimore, and then it was Carolina yesterday. But I'm just saying the last four weeks. So the first three weeks it was Baker, Daniel Jones, and Burrow. But the last four weeks they've been the singular best team against quarterback in football by far. But I'm saying the this is where I don't. I'm asking the question: Are they good? Because Baker and the Bucks put up thirty seven points. The Giants stink. And they got to 18. The Bengals, a strong offense, they got to, what, 33 points. Arizona, they kind of stink. They were only at 14. The Browns offense stinks, 13. Baltimore then got to 30. So I'm just saying of like the three good offenses. The, the good offenses are still putting up huge points on them, but the the mediocre ones, and I'm including the Carolina Panthers, of course, is they're not. So I'm just – It's Part, part I don't, of it is I don't they're, know. In, they're in a lot of – High scoring affairs, or they have been. They play very fast. They play no huddle. They give the opponents more opportunities with the ball. But I don't know if I think their defense is much more middle of the pack overall. And so I think predictability from a fantasy perspective can be more difficult. Speaking of Drake London, Jason, would you rather have London or Tyreek Hill rest of the season? I, I mean, assume that, it's still Tyreek. No, that would definitely still be Tyreek. Uh, Tyreek has been atrocious, as has Jalen Waddle, as have the Dolphins, but. Tyreek with Tua is much better than what we've seen from Drake London getting six London receptions. London or T. Higgins? I would take London. Uh, Garrett Wilson or London? London. Devontae Adams or London? London. Um, okay. 
Yeah. T- I mean, Amari Tyreek- Cooper or London. I'm London. sure it's London. Uh, although Amari uh, Cooper looked great. Uh, I don't know that he cracked into the studs this week. But what's incredible is he only had 12 tar- or twelve routes. Yep. You might watch and go, oh, I thought he wasn't going to be that involved. He wasn't. <laughs> it's like 12 routes in the game, and he still was very good. So it, bright days ahead. Uh, let me get through the studs at tight end real quick before we get into the duds. Two, uh, two tight ends with 14 targets. David Njoku, Brock Bowers. Jason started the week. Very, very. You and I were on the very, very into Najoku rest of season camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, it's Watson. It doesn't matter. They, they I mean, not going to be Watson. Winston. Winston. Sorry. Yeah. Hopefully, it's Winston. It, but it doesn't matter to me. Like correct. David Najoku is too important to the offense. We saw it early in the game. He got the touchdown with Winston, but um, his target oh, share is was, going to be outrageous. That was a man catch. N- Najoku is in the Brock Bauer situation. That is how I view that team. They don't have wide receivers. Right. Cedric Tillman, Jerry, Jerry Judy ran so many routes and was invisible. Elijah Moore, he's not a professional wide receiver. This, this team threw the ball to Jordan Aikens a bunch because they don't have anybody to throw it to. And and so the identity of this team is David Njoku is the wide receiver one. Brock Bowers is the wide receiver one. And both of those guys were outrageous. Yeah, I, I would, um, g- moving past those guys, Hunter Henry is definitely a name that you need to pay attention to. Uh, you've had two games with Drake May. Two double-digit fantasy points. The the targets go his way. So I think he is a – he's still a streamer. Like, you want to play the right matchups, and Jacksonville was a good matchup to to play against, but he is someone that should be picked up. I agree. Kittle and Pitts. Kittle is the tight end one. You talk about the situation with the wide receiver room. Ayuk's mm-hmm. departure and no CMC. Kittle is just – yes unstoppable and then Kyle Pitts Pitts seven for 65 nine targets the, the last three weeks man yeah he's been fine he's been fine he's been fine to good I mean eight targets five targets nine targets those are great numbers for a wide receiver but more importantly the yardage 88 70 and 65 yeah. in back to back to back games that would be a 1200 yard pace that's that's outstanding I mean still no touchdowns I don't know why Kyle Pitts um just can't be used around the red zone but he is uh what was that laugh? He's uh, Jeremy just commented because uh, we had, it was in the in the name at the beginning of Kittle and Kittle and Pitts. Pitts, and he's just he Jeremy is just now getting the joke. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, it's uh, it's a dog. See, food. Kibble Kibble and Bits is the uh, the dog food, right? But, uh, it, I mean, it's and two then, players, and then Kittle and Pitts is the players. Yeah, and so <laughs> it sounds similar. <laughs> So yeah. It's a big hat. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, the pun wouldn't have been funny. Yeah, right. Um, he's going to turn off the recording devices. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back with the duds. All right, unfortunately, we have to have this segment, but maybe we can keep it brief. Pooped in his big boy pants. He's now claiming he never heard it earlier uh, during the, didn't listen okay. to the, the, the Monday Pundit. All right. He was probably too busy figuring out ways to trash Mike's fantasy team. Probably. Uh, C.J. Stroud was was horrendous. I mean, 10 for 21, 86 yards, no touchdowns, although one play changes the entire day. Thank you, Tank Smells. Yeah, Tank Dell in the very beginning of the game had a perfect pass from Stroud right in the end zone. He was falling over, but it hit him in the hands. you got to catch that. Kurt Cousins, um, 232 and one. He's been really inconsistent. I feel like that one game was fool's gold in terms of I, I think people started Kurt Cousins for the last two or three weeks based off of a five touchdown performance. Yeah, I mean, at um, least you know it's in him. I, I will say that, you know, it's a streaming option. I don't I mean, this was a good this was a good matchup for him. It didn't come to fruition. No. But I would still like next week at Tampa Bay, if the weather's okay, I, I think he's still in consideration. Can we talk about one thing I got right this year for a second? Sure. sure. Because Let's I've been reminded of things I've gotten wrong, which there's plenty. But Anthony Richardson not being a player you should draft, at least thus far, seems to be. Well, you, you had more than that. You had the double up because you you always, the whole offseason, had the comparison of Anthony Richardson to Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels, you're my guy. And you were talking about how he's five rounds apart. Five rounds later, he's more proven as a passer, has far more experience playing football than Anthony Richardson, even though he's a rookie versus a second-year NFL player in Anthony Richardson. 
the draft cost didn't make sense and that you believed that Jaden Daniels was actually a better player. So, I mean, yeah, it's a couple of wins Not there. sure the week that Richardson outscored Jaden Daniels is, is time to do that. Oh, yeah, because Jaden didn't, <laughs> Jayden, Jayden didn't, Jayden didn't I was play. like, what? Oh, yeah, Jaden Daniels got injured. What an idiot. They, I bet you, they were Andy, really you're close. An idiot. They were, they were, I bet they were super close they were very and Jaden barely played. Because Jaden ripped off a, like a 50-yard run right You had to look it up. You couldn't just like – you couldn't yeah, just – no, you had it. to verify. I, I really – yeah – um. He is un. I think the quote was unproven, inaccurate, overdrafted. Richardson has all the potential in the world, and I don't want to dog on him and not dog on Stroud or somebody like that. The problem with Richardson was the the mathematical equation for fantasy success in fantasy is extremely proven by history. You don't have top ten finishers at the quarterback position that don't complete sixty percent of their passes. That's like a nice bar for you. Like if you go back historically. Unless you're the special Jalen Hurts here where he was 59% and ran it a bunch. Like, it's just very, very hard. You have to thread the needle. And so Richardson was going to have to prove accuracy before anything else. The accuracy needed to be at a level where you were going to sustain week-to-week success. Richardson will not have games this bad every single week of the year if he continues to start. He will have good games. He will connect with Alec Pierce on two bombs in a game. He will hit Adonai Mitchell down the field. But the we watched every snap of this football game. Oh man! And That's our eyes were rolling into the back of our head on simple screens, out routes, plays across the middle. He had good throws in this game. He completed ten passes, and some of those were downfield throws where you're like, maybe he's even better throwing it downfield. Like I think the math is saying his completion percentage downfield is actually a little bit better than the basic screen game. Richardson's just in a position now where you're like, if you're the Colts. You have eight difficult matchups with teams that can score points coming up. Can Richardson get you there? Yeah, and does it matter? Like, are you willing to not go to the playoffs? Yes, I think they to are. take the steps necessary with this guy. Yeah, I mean they they develop to, him. They've got to develop him. They've got to figure stuff out. His potential and his his physical attributes are in the NFL right now. They're they're literally second to none. Um, he's more athletic than Josh Allen. Uh, he is uh, a freak of nature. And he does need to learn to run out of bounds. What's crazy? Yeah. Oh, I know. He's like running down the field, has a nice pickup, and then he decides to shoulder check the That's corner. Not, it's it's like, going to hurt you, man. It's going to hurt you. He's never been hurt yet. Oh, oh, wait. No, the data says, oh, he's injured Three a lot. Times. Yeah, Three times. Three times in 10 games. Okay, so um, I do think he gets better. I think they will work some of that stuff out, figure out how to um, – play towards his strengths more and more as the season goes along I'm not going to have that happen on my fantasy roster while it happens on the Colts roster for the next little while all right at running back I want to I'm going to bring up some names that struggled this week and I want you to tell me worried not worried or panic alarm okay, okay. Alvin Kamara no not worried. worried really yeah I mean you're going to get Derek no Carr. quarterback well do we have an update on Derek Carr's no injury wide receivers timeline? Chris Olave, they they said. I mean, it, we'll have to see if he practices this week and, okay. and is progressing in protocol. But what they said last week was it didn't appear to be a, a long thing. I, I expect Chris Olave back. Derek Carr is a big question mark because while it's I thought Spencer it was Rattler, a four week span was the estimate originally. Am I wrong about uh, that? Yeah, can we vet Brooks, that? They obviously didn't put him on an IR. Week nine is the likely availability according to Dennis Allen. He said it on Friday. So, likely so by one week more nine. Game. Yeah. So one so, more. We're heading into week eight right now. Yeah. I, I'm not too not worried, worried about. about I'm not worried. Would about you go Kamara. acquire him? I mean, if I need a running back help, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I might. I this, might do this it. This is the time to he do it. He could get traded. He's the only player that the uh, that the Saints can. He's not getting. He's traded. the only player they can trade and save cap space trading, and they are two and five now. I don't think they. They'll it. probably be two and six. Yeah, and, and so you know, if you want to trade for, they got Kendry Miller back. Alvin Kamara, you know. They, they're on the road against the Chargers. The Chargers play a, an ugly they're brand not, of football. They're not winning that game. They're not winning that game, and I, I don't think Kamara's going to be great, so maybe wait one more week and then go try to trade for Kamara when, uh, uh, right before Carr comes back. Jordan Mason did not get into the end zone. Worried, not worried? No, not worried. He got stopped on the one, and then He's Brock an expiring asset at some point. Um, yeah, yeah, of, of course, but for like against Dallas next week? Raheem no. Mostert? Worried, not worried? Uh no. A little excited, to be honest. Yeah, uh -huh. um, I think he's looked good on a per-touch basis. I should have given that as an option. Worried, not worried, excited. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, the I, duds were excited for the duds. Oh, well, yeah. it's the Dolphins against these stacked boxes. The last two games for Mostert, four point two, four point five a carry. He's looked okay, and now Tua comes back. Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, they both. So Gibson got hurt in the game. Ramondre, it was he uh, not a surprise once Sunday morning happened, but it was a surprise the way that the week had trended. That all of a sudden at the end it was oh no, Ramondre's actually going to play, but clearly he was still dealing with his own injury recovery. So, do you see the uh, overall I said no? I mean, see the uh, comments by head coach. Uh, don't give them to me. We're a soft team. We're a soft football oh, team. Oh, that's not you good. Know, we can't run the ball. Challenging the manliness. Can't of run the, the ball. Team. Can't stop the run. Then I saw the gif that we're we're all trying to figure out who's do, <laughs> who did this. I mean, you're the head coach. <laughs> Nothing like calling out your players. It's gone really well in in New England. No one's even going to the football games. Trey Sermon, disastrous. Yes. Devin yeah, Singletary, Tyrone Tracy, terrible performances. Yeah, I mean that. I don't know. I don't know if you can. I don't know where the worry level should be. Uh, because we just we still don't know how well this or how the running backs timeshare is going to go. Two backs on a bad offense, though. If it's a timeshare, if, yeah, on if, a bad if offense. it's a full split like this, where Singletary's getting five carries and Tracy's getting six, that's that won't work. Austin Eckler barely got used. Yeah, under fifty percent of snaps. There apparently six Brian touches. Brian Robinson, he fine, and he was very good. Well, in all, I mean. It's, uh, Sticky McNichols was getting in there. Yeah, they they talked. I like that. Sticky? I never heard Sticky McNichols, but I like it. Oh, I do too. I don't. Um, even, is it a reference? I, no, it's just it's, it just sounds good. Yeah. No, I'm in. <laughs> like, yeah, but he got seven carries. McNichols. They've been talking about him uh, after. That's his... not a dog food brand, by the way. <laughs> That's just a funny nickname. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, th this is actually kind of bad news. Ooh, Sticky Mickey for uh, Austin Eckler because. It looks like, you know, the, the only running back you're going to be able to trust there is Brian Robinson. It It's so – because Eckler had been playing so well. I don't know. That whole that situation's weird. They also uh, – the game was out of hand. Maybe McNichols Maybe. got more snaps because Eckler's the second guy up, and that's happened before. Brian, Stephon Diggs and Tank Dell. Uh, just to keep there real quick, Brian Robinson has, has not one single game under 10 fantasy points and half PPR so far this season, including when he's played like 34% of snaps. I've always thought he's a good player. He just, I mean, you want to talk about running hot with touchdowns. Oh, yeah. He's at six rushing touchdowns already. It's good offense. Loves, you, the, loves the end zone, Mike. Can you blame him? You Can remember, you blame him? Do you remember Cliff Kingsbury's uh, goal oh, line yeah, calls? Yeah. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, what, once you're inside the five, All right, we worried, know what's happening. Worried, not worried, panic alarm. Or excited. Tank Dell. Worried, not panic alarm. Mike? Pretty worried. Pretty worried. I think next week it's against, not working right now. Next week Tank against Dell. Indianapolis at home, you should start Tank Dell. It has to be better. Um, he is averaging six point four fantasy points per game. Yeah, it's been it's been tough sledding. I mean, I I have Dell in a lot of places. I feel the he anger. is the same as Ridley. He's having the exact same season. Yeah, as Ridley. I f I feel the anger and the disappointment. Um, you had a I believe it was week one the drop touchdown. This last week the drop touchdown. Uh, something is not really clicking. Um, I do think that this is, you know, a Stroud and offense. Y you look at, you know, what we talked about earlier with Stroud. If he's on the road against a, a tough defensive matchup, we have yet to see Stroud really go out there and 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 lay a big stat line, um, pass down the field. That's how they normally. Yeah, yeah. They normally refer to he it just as lays lay it that stat right line there. out there. Yeah, big stat it's line. Full. <laughs> um, I, I think Diggs and Tank Dell at home against Indianapolis in this divisional game. The ends game. of these shows past sixty minutes. Oh, we let everything go. It gets a little, gets a little frightening. It's ballers after dark. Uh, I'd be pretty worried about Tank Dell. Yeah, and I wonder how Nico is like makes this whole offense go right now. Diggs mm -hmm. has been really bad outside of touchdown opportunities. Devontae Smith one for negative two. I'm not this was one of the biggest, most painful. Uh, performances of the week in terms of dependency. Oh, yeah, he crushed me a lot of places. But I will say this, he's been very consistent this whole season until that game. Um, yes. Look, Just go, throw this one out. Throw it out. Go watch the Saquon Barkley highlights, and you'll go, oh, oh yeah. Uh, maybe that's why they never threw the ball to Smith. Um, Malik Neighbors, 4 for 41, first dud of his career. Trade for him. 
<laughs> go, go, go get him. Devontae Adams, nine targets, three for 30. <laughs> so In the last seven days, according to uh, this was pointed out by someone on Twitter, feels better. Lost to the Steelers, was traded to a new team, lost to the Steelers all in one week. Did anyone else – and look, I want Devontae added. I love him. I love the player. I want him to succeed. But given everything that's going on, the fact that the first target went right to Adams and it was like not a great target, but he could have caught it and <laughs> hit him in the hands and he dropped it. I took – What is the – I took great pleasure in that one. <laughs> I, mean, I really it, laughed. The Jets feel like the unhinged fantasy manager right now. Yes, I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing where it's like you're just you're just, going crazy. You're trading for everything. Just you're throwing stuff at the wall and maybe fire the coach. You're two and five. Fire the play caller. Yeah, fall, fire them all because it's somebody else's fault. Trade I mean, for his trade best friend. Pay Rod, him. Rogers did take responsibility for playing better, but he also said, you know, we got to run better so we can play action pass. We just got to play better. <laughs> we got, you know, you, you said Rogers took responsibility for playing better, and yeah. I was like, no, he did not. <laughs> For the need to play better. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, the, the other way sounds true, too. He's like, I played well, but I mean, we got to run the ball better. How many interceptions does he have? I'm going to give myself some credit. He's, for got, he's, got a, he's got a handful. I mean, one of them in this game was not his fault. Um, so, in the last three games, he's thrown six interceptions. So, how great. many more wide receivers do you need from free agency and, and trades to be – I mean, you think about it. Lazard, Adams, Wilson, Mike Williams – Conk, 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 conk. Brees Hall in the passing game. Yeah. Just, just needs Jefferson. Getting blown out by Russell Wilson in his debut. It's funny because their offense looked pretty good uh, early in the game. They got out to a lead. They looked like they were going to control the game. Going down before the half, they had that pass to Garrett Wilson that hit him in the chest and popped up. And then next thing you know, the game was out of hand, hand the that other ball direction. You know who tipped, they need? The they need a defensive-minded head coach they got to bring in there. Someone like uh, with a former history of success, like, Robert Sala, who's out there? Jaden Reed, big time dud. Yeah, I'm not worried about uh, it. Two for ten. Christian Watson, send him back to the waiver wire. One for nine. This is what I get for having a slight belief in him on waiver day. <laughs> Tyree Kill, one for eight. Nope. Jalen Waddle, one for eleven. Not it worried. Was painful. Johnny Smith, by the way, twenty fantasy points. Deontay Johnson, one for seventeen. Xavier Leggett. Um, I, I don't think I'm worried about Deontay, but I am a little worried about. The the pumpkining of oh Andy Dalton oh you mean like, the hair color no oh I mean about the uh, the metaphor referring oh, to okay. the uh, uh, the story of Cinderella gotcha. where at midnight mm. the magic goes it's away. not an the, orange the, joke. the clock no. is struck and but he would he would pumpkin better than others <laughs> well they're playing against Denver sure. on the road in Denver this next week that is not good for Dalton no he is he is that's a bad football team. That's a really bad football team. Josh Downs, one for three. You will be able to trust how many receivers with Anthony Richardson? Zero. Trust? You could Zero. play them. Jameson Williams, one for f negative four. Dude, what? What? But but, but don't worry. The, the lines looked amazing on offense again. So weird. Yeah, I mean – They've You're got not, a lot. They've got a lot of weapons, yes. and it's it, it's not always going to be everyone's day. I mean, it's like it, the Gibbs and Monty thing. You know, Monty's had his games, and Gibbs has his games, and Gibbs was 160 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, but Jamison Williams and Sam Laporta combined for three targets and two receptions. Yeah, it was not great, but the Minnesota defense is very, very good. Kelsey Laporta, freaking stupid son of a gun, Evan Ingram and Dalton Kincaid. <laughs> Evan Ingram, by the way, our parlay parte. Dude, <laughs> listen to me. I'm never. Pick, I'm not doing it over the rest of the year. You yeah. can just count on that. Evan Ingram, I had 40 yards. Mm -hmm. He had four for 34 in the early second quarter. He had two and a half quarters to gain six yards. He ends five for 35. I had Gino over 250. He had 180 yards at the half. He's on pace for 360 passing yards. Hadn't he done 250 or more every game? Yeah, he yeah. had done it for like five straight games. And then in the second half, he had around 20 passing yards. This we we taking the unders this week, boys? You're oh, darn right. Triple All unders, right. Uh, man. Pick who you hate and bet them. I, <laughs> I'd say pick who you love and bet against them. Um, where are you guys with Laporta? Uh, the, Laporta is, is certainly – I mean, he's a guy that you can start every week because he's part of a good offense, but he's not – he is not he's like – He's averaging 
just over two catches a week. This he, is why I wanted David Njoku. This is why I look at David Njoku as a top three tight end the rest of the season, is you need to manufacture volume from your tight end position. The Laportas and the Kincaids and even Kelsey to some extent are not getting enough volume where Ingram and Njoku and Bowers are getting the ball every week. We are heading into you know month three of the season. We've got a lot of data. Andy, without looking, Sam Laporta is the tight end what? It, without looking, I would say 17. 18. Okay. Good, good guess. That was just a guess. You were way off. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, I it's – I mean, would you rather have him or Kincaid rest of the year? That's what I'm saying. Like, I think a, a real Laporta conversation needs to happen. We're, we're six games in for them, and it's – we're, we're we're very far removed now from last year's number one overall finish. We haven't seen anything close to that. He's averaging nearly half the points per game of last year. He's still on the field. I mean, this was his highest snap count of the year, 95%. But, but the the well, offensive system, can, they can run the football so well. I'm just saying, for the archetype of the way that he's being used right now, it could, it could change. But it's like Sam Laporta or Tucker Kraft. Moving forward, yeah, I mean, it's, it's I mean, Kraft was three for thirty three. He got in the end zone, but that that okay. I'm saying that because that's who Kraft is for that offense. He's a low be... volume guy, and just he's going to live off of receiving touchdowns. So is Laporta apparently. Okay, and how about how about this for a stat? Who has more targets? Because targets, we we talk about this all the time, Andy. You you especially like targets are what we want for all the receiving positions. That's yeah. that's the like behind. You could go behind behind the scenes of targets for per route run, first first downs per route run, all this stuff. But like. Who is getting targets? That's just, gonna just pay off. Raw just raw targets. That's gonna pay yeah. off. Who has more targets this season? Sam Laporta or Mark Andrews, who we have all hated, who's getting no one way. for nothing. Yeah, I mean, no obviously, way. Mark Andrews has more targets <laughs> than Sam Laporta. Who has more targets? Eric All Jr., rookie <laughs> for the Bengals, or Sam Laporta? Yeah, it's got to be a trick. It's Eric All. Eric All had a good run there. How about Johnny Munt? Oh, dude, Munt was doing work this week. Yeah, he's got more as well. I mean, they've, they've all got one more, but um, who has more targets? Evan Ingram, who's played in two games. No. Or no. Sam Laporta. Your, your best tight end strategy this year isn't to find a good one. It's to hope you play against a fellow bad one. That's about how it's evening Could out. Could you take a Sam Laporta plus something and go, like, trade for Brock Bowers? No, the name. No one's just doing like, it. No. Unless no, that's something is Jamar Chase, you're yeah. not getting it done. Brock Bowers is probably untouchable. All right, here's your top five tight ends in targets. Brock Bowers leading the league. Yeah. yeah. He's got 60. Second place is George Kittle with 42. That's the guy. Outrageous. Third place, Hunter Henry. Yeah. Fourth, Trey McBride. And fifth, Kyle Pitts. Wait, yeah, T. No, McBee's I mean, fourth and he hasn't even played this week? That is correct. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it'd be... <laughs> If he gets Bleh! if he gets four targets, he will be second. All right. Well, there you go. Kittle and Pitts. <laughs> Kittle and Pitts is the answer. Two games left tonight. If that you're bored familiar. and you want to follow along, Mike's got Mark Andrews, J.K. Dobbins, and Marvin Harrison, and I've got Harrison's quarterback, Kyler Murray. And I need the Ravens and to score. I, let me finish. Oh, I thought you were finished. Kyler Murray and James Conner. Oh, I thought I thought you said both. Sorry. Um, and I need the Ravens defense to score fewer than nine fantasy points. What no league, pick, no pick six. What laser. league is that? The league of record to win. To win, yeah. I'm a, I'm up by nine. So laser, don't let oh, me that's, down. That's no pick all sixes. You need? I need the Ravens. <laughs> yeah, thank you, laser. Um, I need uh, I need laser to not turn the ball over. Don't take sacks. Throw it away. Score a lot of points. Waivers show tomorrow. Streaming quarterback options as well. We'll talk to you then. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.